we don't need to look any further by a, a what Essex Heritage and the great uh, facilities we have in our county mean other than to look at this beautiful place on the, a hill in Beverly. It's my first time being here, and as president of the board, I've been honored to be at different places around Essex County that the staff have organized for these meetings, and it's so wonderful to see. In a minute, Jared's gonna give some opening remarks, but we're honored to be welcomed here. And um, just picture this place at 10 or 15 degrees warmer temperature, <laughs> and we'll be fine. So I'd like to introduce our uh, venue host this morning, Jared Bowers from the trustees, up to the mic to welcome us for a couple of minutes. Good morning, everyone, on this tropical New England spring morning. <laughs> it's really lovely to have you all here. Um, I see a lot of faces I recognize, which is great. For those of you who've never been here before, welcome. Um, just in case you don't know about Long Hill, this, uh, this property, this beautiful house and garden was developed by the Sedgwick family back in the 1920s, and then they owned it up until 1979 when the late Mrs. Sedgwick donated it to the trustees. And we've been looking after it ever since as one of our public gardens. Um, it served as our central headquarters for many years, um, up until about nine years ago when we moved down to Boston, where our headquarters is at now. And then we were very fortunate to have an anonymous donor give us a grant to, to rejuvenate the property, which is you know an amazing thing to have happen. And so we're right in the middle of that at the moment. Phase one was um, opening the house up to the public for the first time, was building this wonderful venue that we're sitting in right now. We added a new garden, new restroom facilities, and other visitor services elements. And then phase two, you would have drove in um, at the bottom of the hill, which is our horticultural learning campus. Um, so we're doing lots of programming around um, gardening workshops and sustainable gardening and uh, trying to encourage the next generation of gardeners to come here and learn uh, more about that. We also do lots of fun social events, whether it's our big Halloween on the hill event that we do here, or afternoon tea. So we're, we're taking a sleepy property that many folks have never heard of or have never been to and trying to turn it into more of a, a destination public garden here for the trustees. So, Thank you all for coming. Um, after this is over, the house is gonna be open. Please go explore the gardens, uh, despite the very warm weather. They're really beautiful right now. Um, there's been a real explosion of color over the past couple of weeks. So thanks and I hope everyone has a good meeting. Thank you so much, Jared, for your welcome. Now, for the official welcome, I'd like to welcome um, Mayor Michael Cahill up to the podium, Mayor of Salem. Well, you know, since we're talking history, Beverly was part of Salem for hundred years ago, so it's understandable. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. Um, Senator, it's great to see you. And uh, representative who's represented this morning by his uh, one of his staffers, Liam, who happens to be uh, well known to me, my nephew. Liam actually might have walked, did you walk? He lives about 10 houses down. Um, but I've, I've got to tell you, um, it's exciting to see you here. It's exciting to have uh, Essex National Heritage Area um, meeting this morning. I mean, you think of all the resources that you bring. You think of all the, the amazing work you've done over. Annie, you know the numbers, I know. But, uh, you know, and I know you'll talk about them, but you, you've got an incredible leader in Annie Harris. And, and the, the work that you do really makes a difference. Um, I've got to say a, a little shout out to our state representative who isn't here, and our state senator who's gonna be you know, fighting for us during budget in a few weeks on the Senate side. You know, everything is local, right? And, um, and rumor has it that our representative helped us get a little bit of money uh, during the budget debate this week to build some pickleball courts in Beverly. Which I don't know, how do any of you play it? Yeah, it, 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 it's great fun. Uh, and also uh, uh, some funds to help us put a new HVAC system in our main branch library. Now, the Beverly uh, Public Library main branch was built in 1913, designed by the same architect who designed the United States Supreme Court building. Kind of cool. And, um, and it needs a new HVAC system, and we're going to be putting in, um, fingers crossed, but I think it'll work, uh, a geothermal system in the ground so that we'll have completely clean and renewable energy powering our our, our library. Um, so anyway, uh, more important, well, that is important, my gosh. Um, but I just gotta say, because the setting is amazing that we're in this morning, I grew up around the corner, 
And when I was a kid, our 4th of July, neighborhood 4th of, 4th of July celebrations happened on the lawn of the Cedric Estate. The family you know, allowed the neighborhood to, to celebrate here. And we used to have those old fashioned um, soapbox derbies where we'd put a little car on wheels together and, and walk down the hill. It seemed like the biggest, steepest hill on earth when you were seven or eight. Uh, but this is an amazing setting. It's great to have you here this morning. I know you've got some business to get to. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just again welcome you. It's so great, so great to have you, and, and thanks. Now, Max, I'd like to wait for I welcome up Senator Jen Lovely to make a few remarks. back here. Dr. Bauer had us here uh, last year for a tour, the representative and I. Uh, this is such a beautiful, beautiful property. I've never been here before and it really spurred me to, uh, to rejoin the trustees to enjoy not only this property on a regular basis but others as well. And so the work you're doing here is tremendous. I will tell you, some of you know that I raised tall ducks just as a little hobby and stood them at the top to milk there. And there's a beautiful pair of call ducks down in the poultry house that I noticed last, last year when we were here. So I'm going to check them out on my way out. Um, but it's so, it's so great to be here. And just everything that Essex Heritage does, Essex National Heritage does, just a tremendous, tremendous team led by Annie and Dr. Reed and, and your whole team and what, you, what you've done to be able to bring all these resources to us as an opportunity to be able to see them all across Essex County. And it couldn't be more uh, pleased that over almost 3 million visitors uh, visit every year. 2.7 mi million visitors annually. That's tremendous. Just amazing. And that um, Rep Tucker and I and Rep Paracella, um, we team up to be able to get some resources to Essex National Heritage for the Future Leaders Program. And in 2018, we were able to fund a $50,000 appropriation for that and this year we've already asked for a hundred thousand dollars we have to continue that really terrific program that brings young student leaders these opportunities to work on these federal properties where very little staff or not as much staff as they need so it provides that as well but really provides that leadership and training and those opportunities for these kids and we couldn't be more proud in to be able to do that uh, and, and uh, look for that in the budget so just very proud to call Beverly to my former home. I was married a Salem boy a long time ago. This is this is where I grew up and uh, and Essex County our home. So thank you so much and have a wonderful meeting. Thank you. Now I'm honored to welcome welcome Annie Harris, our CEO, who uh, keeps all the trains running at Essex County. <laughs> And thank you all for coming today uh, on this uh, brisk spring morning. <laughs> um, but I particularly want to thank uh, Jared and the trustees for donating this space this morning. And it is a really a, a, an absolutely beautiful site. So I do encourage you to look around after this uh, and then come back later this summer and have a picnic here. So it's a really wonderful spot. Um, and I also want to you know, thank Joan. Thank you again for the, for the budget request. Uh, the, uh, Rep Tucker. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about the future leaders and the money that comes from the state has really helped us um, keep the program going longer, uh, be able to employ some kids during the winter as well, and also uh, get some kids to some of these other historic sites. And we'll talk about that really briefly. So it's been very, very important funding. So really, really thank you for that. Um, and many thanks to uh, Mayor Cahill for hosting us this morning for all the cooperative work we've done together on the scenic fireways and so many other uh, uh, projects that you've been a great uh, pleasure and always very open to work with us. Uh, just recognize a few other uh, people here today. Um, uh, we have our uh, town manager from Salisbury, Neil Harrington, with us today, so thank you. And uh, we have uh, Sophia uh, Lartigliali from Senator Diane DiZaglio's office and Liam Cahill from uh, Rep. Jared Paracello's office. So thank you so much for coming. I know the House is in session this morning doing, dealing with the budget, I think, which is very important. Um, I think that's uh, it for the, for the elected representatives, but we do have a very nice letter this morning from 
uh, Congressman Seth Moulton, who wished he could be here, but Congress is in session. So I'll just read that quickly. He says, uh, dear friends, I'm very sorry that I'm unable to join you for the Essex Heritage Annual Spring Meeting. I hope that you enjoy the beauty of Long Hill and celebrate the opportunity to be back in person with friends and colleagues. And it is really great to see everybody back here in person. Please extend my congratulations to both the 2022 Partnership Grant awardees and the new commissioners that they will be joining the board today. You're fortunate to live in a part of America that played a fundamental role in the birth of our nation. Through public-private partnerships, the Essex National Heritage Area supports historic preservation, natural resource conservation, recreation, tourism, and educational projects that tell the story of who we are as a people in the country. Congress recognized this too, which is why it created the Essex National Heritage Area in 1996. Since then, the Essex National Heritage Area has proved to be an economic engine for our region, supporting thousands of jobs and forging deep relationships with individuals, communities, and organizations across my congressional district. Your dedication to preserving and enhancing Essex County, a place like nowhere else, is admirable, and your efforts to engage others defines what it means to better our community. I'm grateful for your ongoing commitment to rejuvenate the historic, cultural, and ecological treasures across the 6th Congressional District, and I'm proud to work alongside you to support your mission. All the best, Steph Moulton. And this is really a shout out, not for Essex Heritage, but for all of you, because you all are partners and you work with us together in this really beautiful region. So, so thank you uh, so much. And now, Dave, come back. Uh, many of you know that I am involved in the non-motorized trail work in Essex County and passionate about the Border to Boston Trail, which is uh, developing a trail from the New Hampshire border to Boston. It's a 70 mile trail. A huge component of that is the Northern Strand Trail. And it's my honor this morning to introduce and welcome and recognize one of my mentors in that uh, world, Steve Wilson and his wife, Helen. Steve was absolutely amazing. He started the Bike to the Sea organization in 1993 on an abandoned railroad corridor that many said would never occur. For those of you that get down to the towns, uh, the, uh, two of the towns are in Essex Heritage, Lynn and Saugus, uh, but also the trail continues south in Revere, Malden, and Everett, and it's absolutely a beautiful trail. And it's really changed those gateway cities, how we look at most of the non-motorized uh, transportation and getting people out of their house. And um, I've known Steve for over 20 years, and again, he's been my mentor in this trail work. They say um, uh, trail work is great therapy for the fanatical optimist because you always get no's, but when you get the yeses, they're really high. And Steve waited a long time, and he really convinced the state of Massachusetts to invest into the Northern Strand Trail. And it's on the ground. It's being it's built now. And uh, last October, the governor committed to bringing the last section of bridge from Everett over to Somerville to the Sunday Square train station. It'll be off a light cred bridge. And that was all thanks to Steve Winslow's advocacy. And I also want to give a shout out. These don't happen without uh, participation and um, effort by the spouse. I want to give a shout out to Hill's wife, Helen, who's in the back. Too. So Steve, come on up. Uh, we have a few slides here. So this, uh, I do want to, um, this is a trail in Lint. This photo was just, so this was an abandoned, you know, this does not look like the Lynn that we all know, but this is Lynn. It goes right by the water. Uh, this is um, a bridge in Saugus that goes over the Saugus River that's brand new. And I just have uh, two more slides. And this is Revere. So this is a trail, this is right near the Route 1 uh, goes over the marsh, the Rumney Marsh Revere. So bring your bocce, that's a bocce court. That's yeah. it. That's right. <laughs> so one last slide. I, I could have gone on and I don't have a slide for um, Everett and Malden. 
but they did name a street after Steve. <laughs> this, is my road. this is actually, this is true. It's actually technically an effort, but it's on the Malden line. And uh, I, I got to pick that up. So, so Steve, thank you so much for your energy and effort. Here's your little platform. Um, again, it's my honor for all of the work you've done. I just want to say thank you so much to Dave and um, Essex National Heritage Area. I I actually have to go. I, I'd love to talk. I, I know a lot of people here. I, um, I'm part of a, a regional trail meeting this morning, so I got to head to there. But the the theme of that meeting is if you want to go, there's a, I guess an old native saying of if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go uh, get go farther, go together. And I think that's kind of the theme here. Um, I really appreciate there's been a great partnership with many people I see today um, and involved with Essex National Heritage, Annie, um, and, and I know Bill Stillman, that, who uh, for a long time was a trail person here, were very inspirational. Um, and working together, the Board of Boston. I see, I was talking with Joe Geller um, from Topsfield and Ingrid Berry from Danvers, who were very instrumental in, in helping. Um, these trail efforts, when we started 30, 30 years ago, there was very few trails in Massachusetts beyond Cape Cod or the Minuteman Trail. So getting these together took little bits of effort from volunteers and organizations like uh, the National Board. So as a group, that, the Board of the Boston thing that uh, introduced me to Dave, um, is coming together and we are very excited. Our, our, our Northern Strand Trail will be opening um, you know, officially this spring. And uh, I was just talking to Joe Geller, I guess there's gonna be, May, May 15th there's gonna be a ride from Tosfield into Boston. So, and, and there'll be opportunities for people to travel um, from Boston up to Essex. Uh, I know one of the things I'm enjoying is now you can uh, take the trail out of Boston ride up to Salem, take the ferry back, or you know, go further up. So I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities to continue the, the partnership and build the border to Boston and make that um, another, you know, like a non-motorized entryway into the Essex National Heritage Commission area. So um, excited to be here. Thank you so much and great to see everybody. And we'll, uh, uh, thanks again, Dave, and we'll see everybody on the trail. So, so much, Steve, for all your work. It's so funny that you get an award and you're going on your way to another trail meeting. So, um, that's amazing. All right, next up, um, we're going to approve the minutes from the business portion of our meeting. Um, and these minutes are from last uh, fall's meeting in September at the Bradstreet Farm in Raleigh. So, uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Thanks, Joe. Second, great, thank you. The uh, um, speed of that is that directly inversely proportional to the temperature, I think. So, all right, all in favor? Okay, any abstain? Any negative? No, all right, unanimously approved. Thank you. All right, next, we are going to uh, vote in our new commissioners, and we have four to vote in. So the following four, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce the following slate to you for three-year terms. Rachel Borgatti, Executive Director of Beverly Main Streets, not Salem Main Streets, Beverly Main Streets. <laughs> Nancy Gardella, Executive Director of North of Boston. Donna Holliday, former Mayor of Newburyport. And Kylie Sullivan, Executive Director of Salem Main Streets. Do I have a motion to uh, vote in these four great volunteers? Okay, there's a motion, a second? Second. Thanks, Joe. All in favor? Aye. Great, thank you so much. All right, we welcome. Uh, thank you to this group. We'll keep you adequately engaged in our work in Essex Heritage. Um, so, let's see. The last thing, uh, we want to, um, have some farewell remarks from Paul Dupre. Now, Paul, I don't know if any of you have met Paul, had the honor and privilege to meet Paul 
he was a very uh, wonderful, he was a very wonderful supporter of Essex Heritage. And he was the National Park Service Superintendent for Salem Maritime in the Saugus Ironworks. And we were lucky enough to have him here in Essex County for seven years. He's recently taken another position with the National Park Service in San Francisco, so likely he's warmer than we are this morning. <laughs> but we have a video message to play that he wanted to, uh, he was gonna try to make it out here, but he couldn't, so we're gonna play a short video message from Paul. Hi there. Please forgive my virtual presence to you today. Um, a few months ago, I accepted an offer to move to San Francisco and become superintendent of San Francisco Maritime National Historical Park. I started my new job on Monday, April 25th, just a few days ago. So that's why I'm not able to be with you today in person. I wanted to share with you that my experience as superintendent of Salem Maritime and Saugus Ironworks National Historic Sites has been incredibly rewarding. Through this position, I've been extremely lucky to work with a team of dedicated professionals whose commitment to public service and stewardship has, has resulted in really well cared for park resources and some excellent visitor experiences. These dedicated professionals include park rangers, managers, educators, curators, museum technicians, biologists, building preservationists, historians, budget specialists, administrators, and of course, shipwrights, riggers, and deckhands. I depart with no small amount of regret that I won't be working with my dear colleagues on a daily basis. But my list doesn't end there. You are well aware that the staff and supporters of Essex Heritage have played a huge role in preserving the area's quality of life. Grants and awards for preservation highlight a leadership momentum that create a wake that others in the community follow. Programs like Trails and Sales promote heritage tourism, recreation, and a high quality of life. Teacher workshops encourage stronger integration of local cultural and natural resources into the learning environments of so many students, and of course, through them, their parents. The Essex National Heritage Area is a national leader and great example to other heritage areas. In the past decades, this organization's membership employees and volunteers held together by that fastener that is Annie Harris have stepped it up, not only in showing what can be done, but also improving the value in doing it. My message to you is simply to thank you for your continued support of the Essex National Heritage Area and indirectly of the entire idea of a national heritage area. The designation of Essex was legislated by the US Congress. The meaning of Essex National Heritage Area is created every day by your continued efforts. Please accept my appreciation for sharing your time, your talent, and your energy in making this place even more special. Please also hear my encouragement to continue setting the example, showing what can be done and doing it with style. Thank you and fair winds. If you hadn't uh, had a chance to meet Paul, that was just uh, says a little bit of what he's about. In his last two weeks in the job, he was working hard to develop a trail from the Saugus Iron Works to the Northern Strand. So it worked right up until the end, and we will continue that work, uh, we promise him. So next, I'm going to welcome up Annie and Charles to talk about the future leaders and the uh, partnership grant recipients. Good. Uh, we will miss Paul. He was a great partner, but we've had great partnerships with the uh, National Park Service for about 25 years now, so it's been, it's been a great working with them. Um, normally, I would give you a little bit sort of a state of the heritage area at this meeting, but I think we today decided today just to, to emphasize one program, one very special program uh, that's been started uh, with the National Park Service in about uh, 2009. And it's the Future Leaders Program. Um, and originally this was a National Park Service program, which we gradually take it over and manage and run. And the youth that we hire uh, work both at the National Parks, uh, two national parks within the heritage area, Saugus Iron Works and Sound Maritime, and also at several nonprofit sites. Um, 
It's a, the purpose of the program is to provide uh, quality internships, paid internships uh, for youth in this region. And uh, it's particular youth that have certain challenges. It could be financial, it could be physical, uh, a variety of, of challenges getting uh, quality internships. Um, and also the need to be paid for these internships. And um, we often get uh, use or are referred to us by guidance counselors or other community groups. Uh, we've had 93 um, uh, young people go through the program. Uh, most of go for several years, because it's uh, a program that is both based on training skills, but also training uh, leadership. Um, and so that youth will come to us, they can be as young as uh, 14 or 16, and um, they can stay with us up until their early 20s. And as I said, most come for usually three or four years where they uh, learn about work expectations, uh, acquire skills, and also particularly acquire um, leadership, how to manage uh, other young people, how to manage themselves, and how to become uh, uh, leaders uh, in the job and also in the community. There's a em real emphasis on teamwork um, and, uh, and community building and also there's a civic engagement uh, a portion of this. Um, we uh, talk about what it means to be a good community citizen. Uh, we talk about, uh, often do uh, visits with uh, state legislators. I know that is a picture with Joan Lovely in one of these. Um, and I uh, usually do it uh, before COVID, and hopefully now we do a trip down to the State House. Um, and uh, the, uh, the third kind of component I think is very important about this uh, future leaders is the ability to get these young people also engaged in the historic cultural natural resources of this region. As I said, they work in the two parks in Saugus and Salem where they do a variety of tasks from carpentry and maintenance and learning about invasive species and sea level rise. Um, but they also, this is particularly because of the funding through the state, we've been able to uh, have young people work at other historic sites, such as the Lawrence um, History Center uh, and the Lynn Museum and Lynn Arts, where they've been able to learn uh, skills about archives and again, uh, uh, ways to take care of these properties and also learn about the history of these places. So it's really been a, a fabulous uh, program and uh, I would like to, uh, we would like to introduce um, one of our former future leaders. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce Manny Cruz. Um, who I have known for about, I think, 15 years now. I first met him when he was in the Park Service, what I think was called the SKIP program that became the Future Leaders Program, uh, following over the years. And he's now, um, pleased to say, he's Vice Chairman of the Salem School Committee. He's the uh, Mass Advocacy Director for an organization called Latinos for uh, Education. And he's also running for state rep. So he's a um, very impressive young man, and I'm, I've been pleased to know him over the years. So, Manny? Good morning, and good to be with you all today. I'm using my park ranger voice, as you can see, <laughs> my Stetson, uh, and I want to take you on a tour on uh, my journey to public service. But there's a couple of people that are in the room that I absolutely want to acknowledge. The first is the former Chief of Interpretation, Sheila Kaiser, who hired me. <laughs> Sheila, thank you for the journey that you set me on. And then uh, Catherine Rutkowski, where are you, Catherine? There she is in the back. So Catherine was a park ranger uh, at Salem Maritime National Historic Site, uh, and she was a mentor to me. I learned everything I knew about interpretation from Catherine. She wasn't afraid to challenge me and tell me when I was getting my facts wrong. And then the third person is uh, Mike Parr. Oh, uh, there he is over there in the corner. Uh, he was the, uh, the chief of our actual park rangers who carry guns. Uh, and law enforcement, but Mike is, uh, is truly uh, someone who I admire uh, when we were ever doing our events, always there and talking about the resources and certainly appreciated the partnership that we enjoyed. So you heard a little bit about my bio. Currently I'm serving as the Advocacy Director at Latinos for Education, an organization dedicated to diversifying the educated workforce 
uh, and we work on statewide policy uh, in the legislature. And then I have the pleasure of serving our children and families on the Salem School Committee. But my journey into public service began as a future leader with the National Park Service at Salem Maritime National Historic Site. And this particular journey taught me so many important lessons. The lessons of stewardship, the grounds that we walk on, which are native land, uh, but also carry the history of our country. And I also got an opportunity to explore our country in ways that I didn't think were possible. As a young person growing up in Salem, I thought the national parks were all out west. My misconception. <laughs> When I started working at Salem Maritime National Historic Site, I was a part of this program called the Student Career Intake Program, SKIP, and we had the opportunity to travel to 27 National Park Service sites to learn about the different careers that were available to us in the Park Service, to learn about the various resources and the unique history of our Commonwealth. And one of the components of the program was to build our youth leadership, activate our voice as civic leaders, not just in the Park Service, but also in our community. And we also had the unique opportunity to mentor some of the other future leaders who were preserving the historic sites. And one experience that I want to highlight for you all, uh, at Salem Maritime National Historic Site, we are home to the friendship, uh, the best kind of ship. And I had the opportunity to sail back in 2015 aboard the friendship all the way to New York City. And it was a return to where the friendship was built. And one of the components of that, uh, we got to deal with the high winds, similar to today. So I felt like I was aboard the friendship once again and dealing with the elements. And uh, when we arrived at New York, we had created some programming. Uh, we had trained some of the future leaders on how to uh, provide tours of the ship, to talk a little bit about the history, uh, how the friendship was built, and then to do programming with some of the other youth leadership programs from the park. And the opportunity to mentor some young people that were in my community, Annie, as I was watching the slide deck, I could see photos of some of the future leaders that I know. I saw my friends Alberto, Ruby, uh, and many others. And it was really an opportunity for me to share what I had learned, which was the ability to speak in public, uh, the importance of civic engagement, these resources, and what they mean to our communities. And when you talk about the opportunity to build connections, for our young people and career and opportunity. This is exemplified in my own story. Every single day that I showed up at the Park Service, I was supported by public servants who had rich experience that wanted to see me succeed. So they took the opportunity to ensure that I was doing professional development, that if I had an area of interest, and for me it was, I wanted to be on the friendship. That's where I wanted to do my interpretation. I wanted to greet the public and tell them about the rich history of Salem that extends well beyond the witch trials of 1692. And that was a really formative experience for me. I feel like at heart, I'm still a park ranger. Uh, in my current role at Latinos for Education, uh, now I just, I talk about the history of our Commonwealth and advocacy. I try to teach my colleagues and educators from across the Commonwealth the importance of being involved, advocating for legislation, and that we get the kind of government we deserve when we involve ourselves. And I brought a relic from my time uh, in the National Park Service, so indulge me for one moment here. I want you to read the bio that I submitted for the Future Leaders Program. <laughs> Manny Cruz is a 2010 graduate of Salem High School and is a political science major at Salem State University. Manny is entering his second season as a park guide at Salem Maritime National Historic Site. Civic engagement and politics are at the center of Manny's life. He's a freshman senator at Salem State University, a member of Governor Patrick Statewide Youth Council, and a student board member of Youth Rising. Manny strives to improve the lives of youth. His goals include becoming a representative to draft legislation that affects youth and contributes to improving the education system. I wouldn't be the kind of public servant that I am today without my experience in the Future Leaders Program and the, the opportunity that I had to be mentored by so many amazing public servants. And so public service is my way of giving back and I look forward to welcoming the Future Leaders in the State House sometime in the future. Thank you.
you can see it. Um, so uh, just uh, so thank you so much. Uh, we had hoped to have uh, Danica Thurston talk a little, say a few words about uh, what she's doing with future leaders at Lynn Museum. Uh, she's been exposed to COVID, so she couldn't come this morning. Uh, but the third person who has to speak is uh, Charles Smith. To speak briefly, he is running our program now. Just tell us a little bit about what it uh, means to the kids that are in the program. Charles? Thank you, everyone. Um, of all of Manny's very impressive qualities, I think what just blew me away was the fact that you did that all without any notes. <laughs> um, thank you for being us with. Thank you for being with us here today. I've got a hard act to follow. Um, my name is Charles Smith. I have been running the Future Leaders Program since the Essex Heritage Transition of Management in 2016. Um, so Manny and I never actually overlapped with each other, but we've gotten to work together quite a bit uh, with state legislation for our funding. And I was very, very excited to hear that he is now a candidate for state rep. Um, but in my time here, it has become increasingly clear what this program has meant to its participants. Um, it's meant a lot to us as an organization to learn the impact that Future Leaders has had on its participants and their families. Um, in one letter we received, one of the parents of the kids wrote, my son has had the privilege of being part of your program and I wanted to share with you the enormous impact the Future Leaders program has had on his life. He learned so many valuable skills which he's carried into his life. He's earned honor roll for all three semesters, which is no small feat, and his teachers were all impressed with his personal growth and his commitment to his education. The program has given him confidence and an empowerment, which has had a substantial impact on all aspects of his life. In the words of some participants, while working at the Saugus Iron Works, I have worked alongside people under different circumstances than myself. Many of my coworkers have different disabilities and are of different nationalities. While I believe that I have always been accepting, the Future Leaders Program has educated me on how to look inward and outward from a more compassionate perspective with empathy and patience. It's not easy to work hands-on with people who are unlike you, but through this program we look past our differences and integrate ourselves, coming together as one community. Uh, unfortunately, again, Donita Thurston couldn't be with us here today, um, but I think that she really summed up as well what it's meant to us to be able to partner uh, with our partners, um, who said, their willingness to jump in and help wherever they were needed was truly appreciated, especially as we continue to navigate our reopening efforts. This past Saturday, we had a Juneteenth Festival with North Shore Juneteenth Association Day, which had almost 300 participants from the community. Without our youth staff, we would not have been able to pull off such a wonderful event. Uh, we are extremely thankful for the Future Leaders Program and appreciate the opportunity to bring back some of our youth staff. Uh, and now, I am going to switch hats, as we all do with Essex Heritage, and I am pleased to announce our Partnership Grant Program. So good morning, my name is Charles Smith, I'm the Partnership <laughs> Grant Program Manager. Uh, we had close to 40 applications this year, uh, which made for some really, really difficult deliberations. Uh, and I'm very, very pleased to be able to announce the following 12 winners of our $2,000 Partnership Grants. Uh, the first is the Danvers Alarmist Company, slash the Rebecca Nurse Homestead, who will undertake the task of appropriately repairing the wooden roof and part of the wooden siding of the Circus 1681 Endicott Barn at the Rebecca Nurse Homestead. Gloucester Adventure, Inc. will use their grant to preserve the schooner adventure beyond her regularly scheduled U.S. Coast Guard mandated maintenance. This project addresses the rudder, propeller, and shaft in order to improve maneuverability as well as replace planks and timbers that naturally decay over time due to exposure in salt water. Any 
anybody who has been down to Salem Maritime in the past five years knows what we're talking about. Uh, the Wellspring House Inc. will develop a storytelling project to be shared through a redesigned website and other materials. Gloucester Meeting House Foundation will conduct a structural report to inform the design and engineering of the new exterior stairs and entrance platform for the 1806 Meeting House in keeping with the historic character of the property. The site is the only green space in the historic district and is a venue for ongoing community programming. Lawrence History Center will carry out the historic preservation of the exterior bulkhead and sole entrance to the basement of its warehouse, one of the five buildings within the Essex Company offices and yard. Sorry, some things got uh, shuffled around a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Raw Artworks will create their new Land of Lynn, Looking Back, Looking Forward mural, which will explore the significance of the Land of Lynn from the perspective of its original inhabitants and its diverse historical occupants. Town of Marblehead slash the Fort Sewell Oversight Committee will purchase and build appropriate furnishings for an interpretive display inside the historic circa 1794 to 1801, masonry structures within the town's 378-year-old coastal earthquake fort, a key visual element for the new seasonal docent program that has been endowed through private and organizational donations. First Parish Church of Newbury will preserve their historic burying grounds, which are in need of restoration to maintain the integrity of the landscape and the safety of the visitors to the National Historic Site. The Appalachian Mountain Club will develop an accessible trail hub in Newburyport that will enable people of all abilities and ages to be able to enjoy the trails and the natural settings that already exist but are not yet created. Ipswich River Watershed Association will offer a series of place-based outdoor education programs for Salem Rec, giving Salem youth the chance to get outside multiple times during the summer of 2022 and benefit from nature-based enrichment programming. History Alive, Inc. will expand Charlotte's Salem, which moves through 1850s Salem with abolitionist Charlotte Horton. Charlotte was the first graduate of African descent from Salem State College, or at the time Salem Normal School, and the first African American to teach an integrated classroom in Salem. This portable adaptation brings Charlotte Salem to audiences with ambulatory challenges and economic barriers. Finally, the Swampscott Historical Commission, slash the town of Swampscott, will enhance the exhibits featured in its town hall, which will include displays, videos, presentations, and tours. Uh, please take a moment with me to congratulate our 12 winners of our partnership. Congratulations, and I want to thank Charles for all his hard work on managing uh, all the grants and um, and all of the trustees of uh, commissioners that participated uh, in the reading the grant applications and helping us decide. It was a very hard decision this year. Wish we had a lot more money to give out, but very pleased for the twelve that uh, have gotten the grants. And if you're here this morning. We're happy after this program to take pictures with you, come up here, we'll take pictures of your group, and we will send out press releases to local news and do promotion on social media as well, so people can celebrate with you. Um, and with that, I just want to sort of wrap up our uh, this uh, meeting, and hopefully not all frozen in space. Uh, we do have a number of programs coming up, uh, both virtual programs and in-person programs. Uh, tomorrow night is Salem Ancestry Days. Uh, it's free and it's virtual at 7 p.m. And uh, the, the piece that uh, we're doing is on researching your uh, uh, black ancestors. Uh, and there's been a lot of uh, new work on uh, finding out black history and it's very exciting work. And Nate Ryan, who's a, a trustee, is going to be hosting that for us. Um, on next Monday night, we have a virtual program um, by Harold Burnham and Justin Dimitri. 
uh, about uh, boat, wooden boats and boat building. Uh, you may know that Harold Burnham is the 11th generation wooden boat builder. His uh, boat works is up in Essex, uh, and he still builds wooden boats. It's pretty extraordinary. We had that resource and his, uh, his talent still in this county, and he's doing a talk. And then on, on a series of Saturdays uh, in May and early June, there are three in-person events where you can learn some of the craft of wooden boat building um, up at Lowell's Boat Shop at Salem Maritime and also at Gloucester, Gloucester Maritime. So that's all on our website. Hope you, those of you that are interested in that subject, it's a real opportunity to look up close and personal at what it takes to build these wooden boats. Uh, we have a hidden history, teaching hidden histories workshop coming up on May 7th. Uh, shout out to Beth Berenger and others on our staff that have worked uh, on really uncovering a lot of the uh, very fascinating uh, uh, hidden history and original primary source documents in this region of, about uh, immigra immigrants, about African Americans, about women and the roles that uh, so many uh, people have played in the history of this region over the last four, five, six hundred years or more, uh, and how you teach these subjects uh, in, in school. And um, so that's a, a continuing series of workshops, and the next one is on May 7th. Uh, we'll, of course, be starting our boat tours to Baker's Island and a lot of special tours around uh, Salem and Salem Harbor, bird launching, archaeology, geology, that's coming up. And then Trails and Sails this year is starting on September 16th, 10 days, September 16th to 25th. Looking for uh, lots of uh, great events and encourage all of you to think about uh, participating and doing a walk or a talk. And we're particularly emphasizing uh, the Great Marsh and getting people out to understand what's going on in the Great Marsh, both negative and positive, and the challenges of sea level rise. We're doing a lot around um, trails and outdoors and getting out and looking at the uh, recreational opportunities in, in this region and also looking at uh, programs in, um, in some of the hidden histories. So if you have a program you want to try out, it's really not very hard to participate in Trails and Sales. We encourage you to do that. And with that, I just want to thank you for coming today. Um, the, the, there are these match forms that are at the back of the room, um, so I hope you will fill a match form out. Why do you fill out a match form? Because we do uh, get some federal dollars to the National Park Service, but every dollar of federal funding we get has to have a non-federal dollar match it, and your time is valuable. And so we can match some of that with your time here today, so please fill out your match form for us and really would encourage you to stay briefly and do a little tour. Um, the, ho the house, as he said, has been open for the first time. I've never been inside, and the gardens are beautiful. So I do encourage you to do a quick little tour. I think Jared is, is be available for, for, might be available for questions, but you're free to walk around. And thank you for coming, and it's wonderful to see everybody in person. <laughs>